Well, hello everyone. Thank you to the Stack and Follow Up CRM, How to Grow Your Construction Business. Better efficiency plus improved visibility equals winning more business. So my name is Dave Wagner. I'm the VP of Product Marketing and Partner Development here at Stack. And I will be one of your presenters along with Eric Vargas, um, who will introduce himself in just a second. But before we get started, just a couple quick notes um, on uh, the logistics of the webinar. So everyone except Eric and I are currently muted, um, but that doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you. So within the GoToWebinar dialog, you will see a question box, and we would encourage you to put questions into that um, chat session throughout the webinar. And then we've allocated some time at the end of the webinar to go through that Q&A. Um, also, to let you know, the session is being recorded, and you should get a copy of the webinar uh, in the next 24 hours. So with that said, why don't we get started? And uh, Eric, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to the to our crowd here? Great. Uh, my name is Eric Vargas, COO of Follow Up CRM. Super excited to be here um, announcing this partnership with Stack. We have some exciting things to share with you all today, and what's going on in the construction industry that is going to help everybody win more business. So we're going to start out talking a, a little bit about some of the obstacles specifically related to time we see in the pre-construction business. Eric, what are some of these that you've seen? Well, you know, from our side of things with follow-up CRM, um, human error is probably the number one. You know, most clients in the construction space are running around town, putting out fires, um, trying to track information if they can maybe on paper on a spreadsheet um, or maybe in some software tools that you're using and we hear about those all the time and so um you know i've heard sub a couple of clients call it a vicious cycle where you have no time you cut corners and then you make mistakes and then when you make mistakes you have to go fix those mistakes and then you have no time so the human error Causing inaccuracies is, you know, big one on our side of things. And then um, I would also say lack of team communication. If you're running around town um, and you're probably running around town solo out in the field, and then you have office people working in the office, and then to throw um, 2020 COVID in the mix, you know, lack of team communication in this uh, new um covid world that we're in has really uh, caused some gaps at a lot of construction and service organizations that we are saying um from our um prospects that we've been talking to so th those are the couple of things that we've seen so on our side you know, we see a lot of the same pieces uh, one i'd like to talk a little bit more about is this concept of rework people having to redo the same job multiple times um, one of the biggest time wasters that we see in the business. And, and this comes from not having the most current information, not being able to collaborate with your project team, uh, where you do something, you execute something, but it's not based on that latest information. And then what you end up finding is you have to redo it again. So completely wasted that original time, and it's gonna put you behind the eight ball, which really leads to this basic problem about the result of not having enough time is you struggle to meet those deadlines. You feel like you're being pushed until that last minute to be able to get that bid out the door, to get that estimate out to your client because you've been struggling with so many of the different processes and aspects that are part of your environment. You just can't get the time you need to really do things strategically and tactically to get that estimate out the door in a timely fashion. So one of the, the general solutions that both Stack and Follow Up bring to this is leveraging a cloud-based solution. The cloud offers with it a number of tangible benefits that really help take care of some of these, these obstacles that Eric and I have been talking about. You know, for starters, 
the cloud offers a single source of truth. It offers a single place where all your project data can be stored and accessed. And that access part is huge. With a desktop system, you're frequently only gonna be able to do that work where that piece of software exists. But with this cloud, it's any place you can log on to the internet. It could be in your office, it could be on site, it could be in the comfort of your house. But a single source of truth also makes it much easier to collaborate with all of your fellow employees so you can work together as a team, that you can share information and make sure that everyone is talking on the same page, hence reducing some of that re um, rework that we talked about earlier. What's the result of all that, at least from an estimating perspective, is it gives you more time more uh, to work on what's really important and create faster and more accurate takeoffs. How about on the follow-up CRM side? How have you seen the cloud benefit your team, Eric? Yeah, so a couple of points that we see, the second and the fourth one here, really I would say that, um, you know, the single source of truth for data. Um, having one centralized place for everything is critical, um, especially in the cloud. If it's in the cloud, there's no more VPNing into the office, right? Um, you can do things from your mobile devices in a lot of ways, at least with follow-up, and you, uh, you can do that. You can work from home, and that way the company is not limited to um, the address, right? So especially with people working from home or out in the field, having a single source of truth is critical. And here's the thing. At most companies, you might have a chief estimator. You might have a couple of other estimators that are... Um, putting bids together. When you have a single source of truth, every, it's not the wild, wild west anymore. Typically, um, what we've seen on our side is estimators and salespeople, they, they come to us and they say, you know, we have this guy doing it this way. We have that guy doing it his own way. And everyone's just kind of doing their own thing. But when you have a single source of truth, it brings the team together. And then also administrative people at the company can have access to the same information that the estimators and salespeople are working on. And then even from there, uh, executive VPs and owner can see and monitor what's going on at their company because it's all centralized in one place. So I kind of hit on two there with a single source of truth and then collaboration and tracking across the team. But uh, most, most clients of ours are moving from paper or spreadsheets into a centralized place, and we see that going on in the industry. Thanks, Eric. So we talked a lot about some of the tactical advantages to a cloud-based solution, but how about the strategic advantages? Because we certainly have those out there as well. What happens is when you have a solution that provides you that time, it allows you to be more strategic. It allows you to align your team and work collaboratively towards a common end. It also allows you to be proactive and optimize your future projects. So let's take a look at each of these. We've talked a little bit about collaboration, but looking at that from a more strategic perspective or who are the right people? Who do you need to collaborate with? How should you collaborate? You can really define the elements to make sure that your team is working synergistically and a cloud environment, as both Eric and I have described, really supports that model. The other side is because the cloud is managing and storing all that rich historical data for you, then you can also be more proactive and use that information from what you've learned from past projects to help to do the next project. Really help you not just decide what projects you want to work on, but also decide when you decide to work on it and bid them, what are some of the right numbers to put in. So in these ways, it, it allows you to ultimately operate not just more efficiently, but more effectively, and in the end, win more business. Eric, what are you seeing on this side? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, I wanna kind of summarize this, um, all four of these points into a story um, that I'm gonna actually demo for everybody here today of a company called Best Roofing. Uh, they're a commercial roofer in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, they do service jobs, they do construction jobs, they bid work. So um, all of these four points um, really are shown itself when um, I, everybody remembers the crash in 2008. Um, Greg Wallach, he's actually the owner of the company. He bought Best Roofing right in 2007. <laughs> so he experienced that, that crash. And that's really the story of when follow-up was born because at his company, they were tracking everything on spreadsheets and paper. 
And when they uh, decided to contract with us to start building follow-up, it all um, allowed the centralization of their data and their workflows and having everything in one spot. And then from there, things start to compound, meaning uh, you're free because you're not uh, chasing uh, information down, you're free uh, to think critically. And what that meant for best roofing is they were able to take a step back, look at reports and charts and graphs and say, you know, what, what jobs are we actually winning the most? What kind of jobs, right? What jobs are our highest margin jobs, right? And over time, they, they came to be, um, rather than just a roofing company, to a commercial roofing company. And now they're a commercial roofing company that focuses on high-rise condos and apartments. Why? Because that's where their highest margins are. That's where um, uh, their expertise lies in. And so they have the entire company pointing in that direction. And so they've been able to grow from six to 60 million um, over the years. And that is the power of bringing together you know, sales, bidding, and estimating, and, and takeoffs into the cloud. And these are, these are the byproducts of all. Thanks, Eric. So what we're gonna do now is actually talk a little more in detail about each of our products. So Eric is gonna kick us off, uh, talk about follow-up CRM. Eric, the floor is yours. Great, so I'm glad I, I told you that story because that's a little bit about how follow-up CRM started. Uh, now we work with over 1,500 um, estimators and salespeople all over the country to organize and track their bids, documents, leads from um, the initial request all the way till the contract is closed and won. And one of the great things about the follow-up CRM and Stack partnership is that Stack is part of the sales process and so is tracking your leads and bids, right? So uh, what I'm gonna do here is gonna show you how Best Roofing utilizes our system in a short demo and how that works there. So uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Let's see here. Let me know when we have that on and running there. How are we looking? Uh, there you go, you are set. Okay, so here we have Best Roofing System. Now, this is a live system. Um, we have special permission to show their system. So right when Greg Wallach logs in in the morning, he is able to get that 10,000 foot view. Now today he's coming into the company and, and he wants to check out what one of his uh, sales guys uh, his name's Casey Fletcher. So what he has done here is filtered this homepage by this user and instantly we're able to see um, the sales and estimating uh, information around Casey Fletcher. Now over here we see our pipeline and the pipeline is all the bids that they have out there on the street because you guys know some, some bids can close in a week, some bids can close in 12 months and it's really important to be able to track the different um, statuses of those bids and where they're at in the decision-making process. And that's what the pipeline does here. So what Casey has identified is that he expects three bids for 800 grand to come in in the next 30 days. And this allows him to uh, forecast that to the business. Also, this allows him to follow up with bids that are warm or hot or that are a year out. And the nice thing about this is all of these areas, you can drill into them and focus in on the bids that are in that category. Now over here on the right-hand side, we have our closing ratio. Um, this is automatically tracking as you're working within the system and Casey is doing great. He's closing at a 41%. Um, right here in the middle, we have our captured contracts versus a quota or a goal. Some companies like to have goals and, and quotas. Some companies don't totally understand that. But if you guys are looking to grow, it's important to see if we're on pace to hit those revenue objectives. And you can see Casey Fletcher here for the month of February, his goal is 350 grand. And right now he's captured 213 grand of contracts. And then in January, you can see he had a great month there. 
Now, over here on the left-hand side, we have our bids for the month. So um, here, um, just uh, to state this, this is the entire pipeline, so uh, 113 bids, but this breaks it down month over month. So you can see January, he bid 2.6 million, and February, he bid 2.7 million. Now, if Casey's bidding $2.7 million worth of work, and he closes at a 41%, he's gonna demolish his goal and overachieve on that. So that's the great part about uh, these live dashboard and analytics. Now, all this is great. This is good information to get a pulse of what's going on. But Greg, he has about um, 15 salespeople and estimators. And sometimes he wants to get an overview of the entire company and how they're doing. So all Greg has to do is come here and click on the company view and apply that. And what this basically does is roll up each individual into one homepage view so that we can see everything going on at Best Roofing. So you can see exactly where he's at. So this enables Greg to say, you know, we need to throttle it up, you know, with the bidding because, um, you know, maybe it's our slow season or maybe we have a big backlog and we need to throttle it back right? So this allows him to predict his revenue. So now let's start with, um, let's say you get a request for a bid or a client calls you to go on site to um, do some work. How do you start that process? It all starts with a file, a digital file. So um, we all used to have the manila folders of uh, when a bid used to come in and in that folder we would have everything related to that file. This is basically the same thing. So I'm just going to open up a recent file that they have. You can see 201 Lincoln. Um, and this is the project file that we're tracking. So here's the project name, address, and contact information. Pretty straightforward. And then here is the sales status of this project. You can see this is a new lead. Now, if you remember that colorful pie chart we were just looking at at the home page, uh, this is how this opportunity would fall into that bucket. So if I click on hot, it would put this opportunity into that bucket. So there's a whole bunch of data and information tracking that the um, follow-up CRM allows. And from this um, miscellaneous area, we can see that this lead came from a current client. This account manager's will for a re-roof at a retail location out of their Miami office. So it gives you the information about the job that you would need instantly. Um, and then over here on the right-hand side, we have what we call as our sales behaviors. Sales behaviors are a customizable list of activities so that nothing's falling through the cracks. So here you can see for Best Roofing, they do the first thing they do with a, a new opportunity or bid is they follow up with the contact. Then they set up a client meeting, they do a takeoff, they do a bid, they do an estimate, and a couple of other activities. All of these are customizable as well as the drop downs so that they're tailored to the things that you want to track. Now you can see Will, he scheduled a follow up here. And so what this allows us to do, all these dates that we have scheduled, they interact with our dashboard. So our dashboard is the place that you go to as a salesperson or estimator to see, hey, what do I got to get done for the day? So if I pull up Casey Fletcher again here as my example, if we remember from his homepage, he was tracking and managing 113 different opportunities. Now they're all listed right here. So you can see Casey, he's logging in this morning and he says, oh, okay, I have 15 follow-ups. I have a takeoff estimate and all of that to do. And if it's red, that's telling Casey, hey, this is due. And if it's green, that means it's due in the future. So you can see on the 19th, these are going to turn red, telling him it's time to follow up with these opportunities. So I'm going to open up this opportunity. Um, I'm just going to pick a random one here, Town Green Reroof. And um, he has scheduled a follow-up today. So um, Lauren is the contact he's following up with. Now uh, we integrate with Outlook and Gmail, which allows us to track all communication back and forth between um, Casey and Lauren. So let's pretend I'm Casey here and I wanted to track an email. All I have to do is click on that button. My email pops right open here. You can see that town green re-roof. And now I'm tracking the communication back and forth between me and the client. 
Now, if I scroll down, we can see if there are any emails and there you go. You can see that they sent a proposal to this client. So now you can see that follow-up CRM helps you manage the entirety of the sales process. Now, um, you can do several different activities within follow-up CRM, like you know, creating uh, a follow-up, um, now the takeoff and estimate, that's really where the stack conversation comes into play. So uh, we're going to get into that here in just a moment, but let's close the loop and say, you know, let's say Lauren replies to my email and says, the proposal looks good. We're ready to move forward. All we have to do is update the sales status to contract. And then all your reports and graphs and charts automatically update. And then you can move on to managing the project from there. So a couple of other things that people really like about uh, the system is that you can upload documents, photos, whatever it is you need. You can see they saved the proposal here right into the system. Um, you could also do it from your phone. So if you're on site and taking pictures of damage, you can do that as well. So everything's in one spot, bringing all the company information around this job together in one spot so that you can work together as a team to uh, win these bids, win these jobs, follow up, make sure nothing's falling through the cracks. So that's how you're managing um, these opportunities within follow-up CRM. And um, like I mentioned before, one of the most critical parts of um, the sales process is doing your takeoff and estimate. And our future integration that uh, we're gonna head into here um, with Stack will facilitate that so that we can bring both of the solutions of CRM and takeoff together in one spot so that this integration is really going to help optimize um, your time so that you can bring two best of class solutions together and have them integrated. So uh, from here, I'll just hand that back to you so that we can talk about Stack and how that would pick up the ball from there. Thanks, Eric. Um, so as let's talk just for a second about the stack as a company. Let me bring this back up. So stack, stack is a stack construction technologies provides leading takeoff and estimating software for the construction industry for subcontractors, general contractors, uh, buildings and suppliers. And we really focus on three primary elements. Uh, the first one is making sure that these teams, these estimators have access to all the latest project documents so they can first decide whether they want to bid on the work. And then also to actually, as Eric mentioned, go through the takeoff and estimating process to respond to any request. The second problem we're solving is a cloud-based solution for quickly and efficiently doing your takeoffs. And then the third is leveraging those takeoffs in conjunction with the assemblies that you create to associate the labor, the cost, the materials to actually create a full estimate and provide a proposal to, to the clients that you've been asked to provide a bid to. So with that said, let's go and now take a look at the stack product. So as we first enter in, what we're going to see is a list of projects that I have access to. Now, I could look at that either in a list, I could look at it in a calendar, um, but you have that instant view into what's going on across your organization. Now, I could go out and create a brand new project. I can define basic characteristics and have a new project basically kicked off in less than 30 seconds by putting in a little bit of addressing information and who's on the project team and start dates. But what we're going to do is actually um, use an existing project here. And what we're going to see is as soon as we go into the project, you're going to see a list of all the plans that, and supporting documents that have been associated to this project. And you can use a foldering organizational mechanism to organize these in a way that makes sense for you. Because as I talked about earlier, one of the keys is making sure you can find the right document quickly and efficiently. 
don't waste time looking for documents. Uh, a study came out not that long ago that said that the average construction professional spends five and a half hours a week just looking for document information. Now, I'm not going to pretend that all five and a half is spent in this task, but there is a certain amount of wasted time just looking for the right plan to make sure you're moving in the right direction. So we've optimized that process. So for starters, we've made all the plans searchable. So if I go search on wall, it's going to bring me back a list of every plan in this project that has the word wall on it. And it's going to tell me how many times it was actually found. So if we go in and view this plan in greater detail here, What we're going to see, backlit in green, let's zoom in on a few of these, is all of the instances where the word wall appeared on this document. And while we're doing that pre-processing of the documents, we're also going to reach down in here and find the sheet number and pre-populate that as an automatic tag against the document to make it easier to find. And also to help with your navigation, we're going to take all these callouts that we find and we're going to back highlight them in blue and make them automatically hyperlinked. So by clicking on one of these, I can do a quick view of that document and actually open it up in a full viewer as well. And if you bring over additional addenda or revisions to documents that you need to make updates to, we also have an overlay tool that you can use to overlay two different versions of the same document on top of one another and visually see using purples and reds and blues what hasn't changed, what has changed from the original, and what has changed in the addenda to give you that very quick visual indication as to what's going on. So the goal being is to put the plans in the hands of the people that need them and then to collaborate, to use a set of markup tools, highlighting clouds, callouts, and text boxes to draw attention to key elements on the plan or dimension lines or legends to bring additional detail of what's going on. As mentioned sort of from the dimension line, you can also scale the documents to make sure that you have the right scale, either using a calibration or one of the standard list of scales that we provide out of the box. So the goal is you've now found the plans that you need to take off. You, you know that you want to bid, you want to move into the takeoff piece, which really is the second major component. So here you can now see a list of all the takeoffs that have already been created. So let's go create a new one. I'm going to scroll over here just a little bit. Actually, let's pick a different document. And we are going to create a takeoff on what is going to be this masonry wall right here. So we're going to create a brand new takeoff. And then we're going to pick what type of takeoff do you want to do? And we certainly support all the basic areas and linears and counts. With our count, you have an auto count feature. So you can essentially on one time define what a picture looks like that represents a, a fixture or a toilet or something along those lines, and we'll automatically count them for you. You can all do linear uh, drops for our electricians. You can do pitched area and linear for our roofers. You can do volumes for our cement guys, concrete folks. But we're going to do a surface area here. And we're going to go in and give this a name. And we're going to call this a, a four foot wall. You can give it a description. But we're ready to start our takeoff. So I'm going to hit the create takeoff. And I'm going to pick a color here that I want to use as part, or a thickness that I want to use as part of this takeoff. So now we're going to start the measurement. And because I picked a surface area, it's going to prompt me for how tall it is. So we'll say it's four feet. And I'm also have the option to assign a label. Think of these as an attribute, a piece of metadata. It's a something that you want to assign to this takeoff to help organize it, to help you report on things, to help you uh, print things to help you group things into logical pieces. Now you can create as many of these labels as you want, project by project. You can create labels that you use across projects. It's really up to you. In this case, we've created two labels, one for the CSI. So we'll go in and say this happens to be related to, uh, say, concrete 
exterior improvements and another one will say it's phase one of the project. So you can not only create a label, but you can identify very specific options that are selectable within this label. So let's go out and do the measurement now. So I'm gonna start and we'll just click and drag up to here. And now we have a bit of an arc. So for all those folks on the phone who have already used Stack in the past, here's a little surprise. As of less than 24 hours ago, we released our newly improved method for doing arcs. So now all I have to do is hit the A button. Oops. We're gonna finish that off, hit the A. And then we can scroll around. Let's start that over. I managed to mess that up in my talking. So we'll do a line. You can hit the A. Move around to the apex of where the arc is. Click again, we'll drop a little point there. Finish off the arc. A little more line. Hit the A for arc again. And we'll miss the apex by a little bit, but that's okay. We'll still get it right. And finish off the surface area. And that easily now I can create a measurement uh, combining lines and arcs to define this surface. You notice now when I hit my finish, I now have a new four foot wall and I've defined that 281 square feet. I can go out and look at a series of reports that help define what my overall takeoff quantities are and summaries around the specific measurements that have been made. And here's my four foot wall one. But of course we don't wanna stop there. We wanna go beyond and also understand the other components that, make, that go into this wall. What are the assemblies? What are the items that make up the assemblies? What's the labor cost associated with this, the materials? So we're gonna open up this four foot wall again and we're gonna add an assembly. Now you can go, and create all of your own item and assemblies using custom formulas and anything you want, and they'll be made available to you within the My Assemblies area. What we're gonna do though is pull from a list of uh, stack preloaded assemblies that we've made part of the base system. So it's all broken down by CSI, so we'll go in, dig down into specifically the assembly that we're interested in, and add this assembly and associate it with the takeoff. The assembly now is going to prompt me for a series of pieces of data that we need to complete the operation. What's the width count? You know, how high is the wall in feet? Um, what's our, our flashing roll length? How, what's our crew production hours? How many bricks can they do per hour? And other things like how big is the masonry crew I'm gonna use? What kind of flashing do we want to use? What type of wall tires? And as you can see, you can predefine these in advance or use our pre-built ones to define all this information. We'll save this off. And now I have a series of reports that I can use to really start not just just look at the actual item, the takeoff themselves, but start to dig into the cost. And this is where those labels become very handy because I can now start to group on the various labels and for instance, group on each of the CSIs and see what that report looks like. The ultimate goal though, is now being able to have that full estimate. So by clicking on the estimates tab, I'll see a complete description of everything that's gone on with this project. And of course, we've defined through the takeoffs what the project is going to cost us, but what we haven't done is figure out what is it going to cost, what is it, what are we going to sell it at? What will be the price? So here's where we can actually start going in and looking at our labor cost and putting in markups and seeing what all of our materials are and defining their markups. We can start to look at subcontractor costs that we want to add in, any non-measured costs that were not part of the takeoff that we want to enter in the system like a dumpster, overhead that we're placing across everything as part of the project, as well as any sales tax to give us a complete picture of what the overall estimate looks like. And when we're ready to create a proposal, it's as simple as just hitting the new button and going in and defining who we wanna create the proposal for. So first, who's it from? Who's it going to? 
Any general areas like what's the scope of work? Any terms and conditions? And then we're ready to download the proposal. We can also again leverage those labels to create exactly the proposal we're looking for. So we'll create a summary screen that is sorted by phase or summer, subtotal by phase and CSI. We'll also include a detailed page with the pricing, also do that by phase and CSI, and we'll take that one down to cost types. So when I download the proposal, now I'm ready to send a professional looking proposal that contains all the information from a summary perspective and a detailed perspective on what's going in to this estimate bid proposal. So as you can see, the goal of the stack is within a cloud environment by that collaborative space to allow people to get to the data they need in a hurry, create their takeoffs and estimates, and provide that professional estimate back to their potential client. So I'm going to jump back into the PowerPoint. And now we're going to open it up for questions. So anybody have any questions about sort of cloud for pre-construction or specifically stack or follow-up CRM? Okay, any last thoughts, Eric, before we end the, the webinar? Um, no, I'm excited to just announce this partnership and, um, you know, we're discussing internally between uh, Stack and follow-up on what the um, integration will look like and hopefully uh, our next webinar would be presenting that integration to everybody. Excellent. So, Eric, while you were talking, we did a good question come rolling in. Is follow-up CRM part of Stack subscription? So no, it is not. We're to two separate companies. Um, so if you're interested in follow-up CRM, visit our website, followupcrm.com. I'll also post that in the chat for you as well. You can reach out to me and we can have a conversation. Yeah, to, to follow up what Eric's stack and follow-up CRM are two completely separate companies that have formed a partnership. So what we're looking to do is Eric talked to uh, at the end of his presentation is really create that linkage between the two systems to make it a seamless experience where you can take the plans that you're managing and follow up CRM and with a click of a button, have those pushed into stack. So you're ready to initiate your takeoff process. So we've got actually a bunch of questions just came rolling in. So let's step through these. So the next one, um, do you have any projects that do underground construction? Uh, yeah, I think that might be for you. Not yeah, really. I think, um, and I will have to look into that and get you back on and finding out if we, I have an answer on that one. I do not know that one off the top of my head, I'm afraid. Uh, does follow-up CRM connect with QuickBooks and can you invoice from follow-up CRM? So you cannot invoice from follow-up CRM. However, we can connect with QuickBooks. So um, that's what we can do there. Excellent. How would you assign pricing from a vendor item into item pricing? So I'm guessing that's on my side. So right now the item pricing is defined as part of the item or the assembly package. We haven't yet integrated it directly into any vendor databases um, at this point in time, but we're that, that's part of our roadmap moving forward. Uh, do we work with uh, dry utilities and wet utilities? I assume that means we have projects that have used those in the past. Um, again, I'll have to look into that one for you, uh, Al, and see what I can find out. Um, session is being recorded. I'd like to share it with some of my team members. Will we be receiving a copy? Yeah, absolutely. You will be receiving a copy in approximately 24 hours that will give you a link to everything that we're talking about now. 
Um, is Stack an alternative to the edge? They are specifically commercial roofing takeoff software. Uh, it, within the roofing space, yes. Yes, Stack is going to do a lot of the same thing Edge does. We just do it for a broader set of disciplines than Edge does, which has a focus towards roofing, but they're, they are solving a similar problem. That is a correct statement. Can you issue a PO from follow-up CRM? Uh, no, that's going to be done uh, out of your accounting system mostly. Okay. I do use Stack for doing takeoffs for underground utilities and then trying to build a bid proposal. So there you go. Thank. Uh, so gotcha. So you have been using it so far. So that's that's good. And um, if you are struggling for whatever reason on that side of things from building a bid proposal, let us know. We'd love to hear that in more detail. Okay, those are some great questions. Anybody have anything else before we conclude today's session? Okay, well, that looks like it. Well, I wanna, on behalf of Eric and myself, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us and um, look forward to getting a copy of the webinar here within the next day. Thank you, everyone.